for Biritz would take them through as uh, pool winners in this pool. Also got a turnaround. They have got the benefit of the elements in the second half. Confirmation as well of uh, a result at the Rett where Bath have beaten their only. But back to Belfast where your commentators are Tyrone Howe and Martin Gilling. So Biritz have the lead, six points to nil. But so far, so good for Ulster. They played superbly. They dominated for long periods in the first half, playing into wind and rain. And this gives you some idea of what the players have to cope with in the second half. News from the dressing rooms. Well, we saw Emnel Haradordaki pick up a knock before they started today. Well, he's finally succumbed. He's been replaced by Samir Vahopalau. So Vahopalau is on in the back row. Here it's his second in force change of the day. They lost Marcelo Bosch early on when he took a knock to the head. Michael Bond is on for him. Well, they're singing at Ravenhill, Tyrone. Do they sense that the glory days are returning? Well, it may, may not be the most sophisticated of songs, but uh, stand up for the Ulster man, and they want to raise the performance of this Ulster side even further in the second half. All the conditions in their favour, but as they saw from the boot of Damien Try, it's still not easy. You've got to execute things. And Try, when he looked at that and let it go, and it's Ulster straight onto the front foot. The rain is lashing down harder than it has done all afternoon. Come back, Black! Come back, Black! Well, you can see the two Lunds standing off. Dimitri Yashvili calling the shots. There he is, right underneath his own goalpost. Eric Lund, who spent 10 minutes in the bin in the first half. Every catch has to be made, certainly when you're playing into a win like this. Get back, get back. Well, yes, Billy is so experienced. He'll have played in conditions like this many, many times. Oh, and there goes Yash Billy hacking the ball on. And there's Bolshaw. There's a chance here for Bolshaw. Two, three kicks. Humphreys is back. And in the end, look at that. Superb defence, that was Nevin Spence falling on it. Pinar. Well, Buritz put themselves in all sorts of trouble, but the magic of Yashvili. Perfectly weighted, to chase his own kick, and then it's just, just trying to keep the ball going forward, a foot race as well, and ball shot. Well, it didn't matter where it went, as long as it kept going forward. And Nevin Spence, it's taking pace out of Bolsha, just trying to control the ball. And it allowed Nevin Spence to come in and clear up the trouble. Well, some irony there that it's Nevin Spence who's the first player for a while to get his hands on the ball because Nevin Spence is a former footballer and a good one at that. Michael Bond took two attempts, so the ball went backwards. There's Tranier. Oh, look at this drive hey, from the Frenchman. Yes, really. There's Hale at Petty, the flip to Magnus Lund, but the ball goes forward in the contact. And that was Willie Falloon who threw it back, but we'll come back for the first knock on. Well, that drive there. You see the reverse pass. But Berets have come out with a lot more urgency to their game, despite maybe allowing that restart to bounce. A lot of power in the pack in Yashvili. Well, he's got all the skills, and he has been the difference for this Berets side for a long, long time. Just before the game, we heard he had signed a four-year extended contract, and and no wonder. But he can produce the magic, but he needs the rest of his team to keep hold of the ball. And Lund there again, a cheap turnover. And Ulster, well, from this position, I would only expect one thing to happen, and that is for the ball to get absolutely belted down the pitch, try and get deep into the Barrett's half. Touch. Well, the Frenchmen have lost Pause. only one of their last seven clashes against Irish teams since 2003. 
it was when they lost by 19 points to 23 in the 2006 Every final against Munster. Spirits, twice <laughs> beaten <laughs> finalists. They know what it takes to get on to the big stage in Europe. Ulster, remember, former champions 12 years ago, but in the 12 years since, have not got through the pool stages. But today, perhaps, is their chance. Top of pool four at the moment, Beeritz with 16 points, Ulster with 13. Bath after that bonus point win against Ironi at the wreck today, they're up to 13. But it really is about these two teams here today. I'm sure Ruan Pinar will not be happy that Nigel Owens didn't let him take a quick tap because he just chipped the ball down the pitch and it rose literally centimetres before the corner flag by the try line. Another one for Damien Try. Look rather more confident underneath that one though. So we're through the first four minutes in the second half. Beeritz continue to lead those two penalties from Dimitri Yashvili. And despite losing their captain Imanol Haranordiki, they've still got bags of experience out there. The likes of Sylvan Markane, Dimitri Yashvili, Damien Try. There's Humphreys to Paddy Wallace. Pinar. There's Darcy, the fullback. A long pass out to Daniele, but it doesn't go to hand. So he switched the play, brought Adam Darcy in that first receiver position, but just a poor execution of the pass. And two again, he's having a huge game so far. Been trying to float it across into Daniele's arms, running onto the ball. Yes, you talk about the game that Dan Tui has had. His first game of rugby was played on the wing for Western Supermare Colts. He's come a long way since then. Oh, good. Palm back by Tion. Referee says it wasn't straight. And all these things will rattle the French side. And the more the frustration sets in the more that will play to Ulster's advantage and anything certainly in this half even within maybe five six yards Standard inside Ulster's own half Ian Humphreys the way he's been kicking and the distance that he's got in his boot he will fancy his chances to slot over penalty opportunities crouch touch pause engage Pressure being applied there on the Ulster pack. Well, we're going to go through it all again. Ulster fortunate there because Beritz had the squeeze on them. They're like very scrappy for Pinar. Back row, stay bound, please, both sides. Don't don't get bound, stay. Well, Declan Ball Kidney, up. the Ireland coach, Crouch. has got uh, Six Nations not Touch. terribly far away. Pause. Big year, World Cup year. Early engaged. Although I must say that's a long way from players' thoughts on a day like today. That's Lukafia. Lukafia, whose father was an Olympic finalist in the javelin 27 years ago. <laughs> Finished 12th in Los Angeles. Former French record holder. I'm not sure how relevant it is to the events today, but uh, <laughs> quite a thing, isn't it? Well, Stephen Ferris made a big hit and got in on the ball. Actually, almost had time. He was on one foot after a couple of seconds, but was almost looking up at the ref. Big hit from Falloon as well. You see Ferris, he's got the right toe on the ball, on his right foot, looking up at the ref. Nigel Owens. Well, we said... Humphreys has the range from within, maybe five, six yards inside their own half. 
Well, he knocked one over from halfway last week against Treviso. And when the weather wasn't good, nothing like today. There's uh, Big Bro looking on. I think Big Bro might be saying a little prayer or two because they just need to get themselves into the game. A few points would be would so miss at this stage. So he missed one in the first half. He's certainly got the length on that one, and he's got the line. And the roar tells the rest. And when the ball finally came down, it actually came down out of play. There, there are next a couple of yards in that boot as well. But he struck it. It was absolutely beautiful. And eight and a half minutes gone. And that will settle the nerves because you know every time you get down there maybe you get a bit of possession and you don't come away with points again frustration maybe that you're not using the the win to your advantage can set in so those three points vital for ulster well that came back on the wind again but nobody read that one wait, wait. there's laurent tranier securing possession yes billy and that's into space back goes trimble here comes ball short oh, yes billy calling the shots again Terrific kick from the scrum half. And here we get a, a sense of the wind. As soon as it hits it, its peak, this holds up and then goes backwards. And the reason those three points are vital because because it reaffirms that what Ulster are doing is actually working. The possession, the territory, keeping hold of the ball, and the penalty opportunities will come. I don't think we're going to see ten tries today like we did. The Beritz against Ajon game last week. Well, that lineup ball was intended for Le Cafia. But the hooker missed his man. Here's Hale at Petty. It's good from the fullback. The tackle eventually from Best. Just inside the Ulster half. Yashvili with a little dab ahead. Cross comes Vanenberg. Pirouettes. Did rather well for a big man. Humphreys. Stay Sam. Well, look, Petty's underneath it. Way wait. Oh, goes Magnus Lund. Takes play into Ulster territory. Yashvili. Let's try, oh, and straight between Aron Trenier and Ian Bolshaw. You can see what he was trying to do. It was actually really skillful getting the ball away so quickly. But the Brits line, just to crack up a little bit flat. Ball went, well, it was in front of one and behind another. And the Ian Humphreys kick just getting the ball out there, forcing, inviting Brits to counter-attack. So as it stands, Brits doing enough to take the pool. If they win today, they will have pool four in the palm of their hands. They'll then just go home next week to take on Bath, essentially to secure a home quarter-final. But we're a long way from done here. 28 and a half minutes to go. Ulster playing with a fierce wind at their backs. The away, away. rain is still coming down, but it's largely subsided. Let's try it. The high ball just hanging up in the wind. Trimble is there. Bolshaw bearing down on him. But Trimble just bounces off the Englishman and Bolshaw has stayed down. So Beeritz for now essentially down to 14 men. There's Humphreys. There's Damien Try. To Hale at Petty. Well, it's a good turn. Gwenya out there on the right wing. He's Barely touched the ball today, has he? There's a bit of a question mark over Nguyen's fitness. Well, on the strength of what he's seen in the first 52 minutes, he might as well have stayed at home. He's given, given a fitness test this morning. He's probably standing there thinking, what on earth did I do not pulling up? But Bolshaw came off second best, chased the kick. Trimble took it well. I think just the, the clash, the back of the elbow maybe, was it? Into Bolshaw. And again, it was Magnus Lund earlier on in the match. Now it's his brother, just a knock on. Well, the 
of this Biarritz side have got incredible depth in their squad. They've got an international wing on the bench, Ilikena Bolakoro, Fijian international. Well, the sudden death or almost sudden death games come at every turn here on Sky Sports. 5.45, Scarlets against Leicester. That Pool 5 clash, it is a massive occasion, particularly when you consider that Perpignan picked up a bonus point win in Italy earlier today. Really, Pool 5, a lot yet to be decided there. Same story here at Ravenhill. The rain has gone. Humphreys, the chip over the shoulder there of Bolshaw. Of course, comes Taylor Petty, but it will be a line-out, 10 metres short of the Beeritz line. Really smart play. The back line was fully loaded, but Humphreys, he saw the space, beautiful chip. And look, one, two, and it forces Taylor Petty to take it out into touch. Advantage Ulster, they get the territory and they get the line-out. And they've got to click into monster mode now. They've got to come away from, from here with points. Refuse to allow Beeritz to clear the lines without giving away some form of points. Drop goal, penalty, doesn't matter, but the line-out has to function. Set-piece crucial, the last one went awry. Well, the decibel level has picked up a couple of notches here at Ravenhill. This Beeritz pack, so powerful. And it is an Ulster ball. There it is. They're keeping it tight. They're within three metres. Within two metres. There's the ball for Rune Pinar if he wants it. I can't imagine this is going particularly wide, though. Edward Kutz here, the loose head prop. You can see there defending stoutly for Biritz. There it is again. Pedri Vandenberg has his hands on the ball. There it is again, the pick and the drive, the try line, almost within touching distance. There's a pile of bodies, Nigel Owens is in the perfect place to see anything here. There it is again, Magnus Lund is in there. The referee urges hands away, that instruction being directed at Biarritz. There it is again, the try line within centimetres. And it's been knocked on by Ulster. They weathered a huge storm, didn't they, the Frenchman? Yeah, that was advantage, Biritz, in terms of the pack. Under enormous pressure, as you say, it was two yards, then it was one, then it was half yard, then centimetres. But not protecting the ball well enough. And Biritz, well... Maybe patting themselves in the back for that one. And they piled every, even Inguenya standing in this sort of third of the pitch. There was only one of the Beritz side further out than the third of the pitch, throwing people into the defence. But they've managed to get the turnover. I guess in many respects it's not a classic but as an occasion they don't get any more massive than this and well the nerves you can sense them all the way around Ravenhill well, when we saw the selection on the very side when we saw the weather forecast I think we, we knew what sort of a game that we were in for and I think Ulster also knew what they had to produce to give themselves a chance of victory in this game they produced it in the first half the three points are there so far in the opening eight minutes they're putting the pressure on this Burritz line but crucial they have got to come away with points when they get into this Burritz 22 and let's not forget if they can not only get ahead but starve Burritz of a losing bonus point the situation becomes even better for Ulster so Ian Bolshaw the latest to succumb to the battle Ilikena Bolakoro is on. There was a chance that Bolakoro might start today with that injury cloud over in Guenya. An injury which, in all honesty, really hasn't been tested yet today. 
So Biarritz have lost Bolshaw, they've lost Haranordeke, they've lost Bosch. Darcy, the fullback. On the Biarritz 22. Pinar, there's Trimble to Vandenberg. Humphreys. That's Wallace. Tui. The tackle from Tion. Well, you do get a sense. Well, the advantage is being played here to Ulster. The penalty straight in front, 25 metres out. And before this third quarter is out, Ulster have a chance. Of evening up the scores. And this is the reason that we said in the first half. It's the reason that Biritz needed more points in the first half. This win makes life so difficult. You get stuck down in your own 22. It's really difficult to get back up the pitch. Well, we remember that penalty count from the first 40. If that is anything like replicated here, then it will be Ulster's game. Barely watch. No mistake from Humphreys. After 57 minutes, it's all tied up. Well, when you look at that face on Coach Brian McLaughlin with the eyes closed, you get a sense of what the significance is of this game, not only for the players, but the coach, and also for the crowd. Victory here very much puts Ulster in the driving seat. And every kick counts. What a final quarter we've got ahead of us. Hamburg with a catch. Back to his former Springbok teammate, Ruin Pinar, who gives that a mighty clobber. But in the end, the bounce of the ball goes Beeritz's way. And as we saw from the bit of Damien Try. Just a little slip. Just, you thought if that ball bounces to the right instead of going straight or left, then it is a stunning kick. Instead, in the Ulster 22, Beritz get a scrum, and you get the feeling they will have to make the most of the time if they get in to the Ulster 22. A draw, if that is what we get, would suit Beritz. They would go home next week, just needing to beat Bath to clinch the pool Throat. yet we still have 21 Touch. minutes and a little bit more to go Pause. picked up by Lacafia. there's Tranier Tranier all six foot two and 105 kilos roll away white let it come please let it come white the Hoffalo feeds Lund there's Verhoeffelo again, on for Harren Nordeke at half-time. Harren Nordeke, having picked up that knock in warm-up. There's Kurtzia. Well, we haven't seen this sort of stuff from Beeritz in this part of the field in the first hour. And this is what they do so well. That was Lund. Johan Muller putting his shoulder to it. As is Paddy Wallace. Back to Damian Try, the drop goal specialist. But he's pulled it wide. That's a waste of an opportunity. But the problem is, he was left with very little option because the big ball carriers are not able to get across the game line. The Ulster defence has been very strong, close to the ruck. Biritz having to throw players in simply to recycle it, never mind to try and generate quick ball. And Damien trying the 10 shirt has had an afternoon to forget so far. 
Well, Damien Try kicked a drop goal a couple of weeks ago with the last kick of the game to secure a losing bonus point when Biarritz were on the road to Montpellier. Expect to see that sort of thing again from Try if Biarritz get the field position. That's Willie Falou. Pinar again. Not quite so much boot on that one. And that time, it's perfect. Well, he made up for the last one, didn't he? Just saw it floating in the air, bounced end over end, judged to perfection. It doesn't matter with this sort of wind. Why would you go through the hands five, six phases when a quality kick like that gets you deep down into the 22? So Ulster have 19 minutes in which to decide their fate. Taken in then by Benoit August. Damien Try has got his heels virtually on the dead ball line. There is Try. Well, he couldn't do much more than that. Again, with these conditions on the line out, it's very, very difficult to throw to the back of the line out, which means you throw to the front. It keeps things very narrow. The angles become that much smaller. And Try, I mean, all he needed to do was just, he just, he just had to get the ball away. With the wind and the angle, it was very unlikely he was going to get a great deal of distance. So this time it's Jan Muller who's making the call. There it comes to all the best, and it is the Muller himself. So, a knock on there with the second touch. It's just accidentally offside. They separate, then come back together again. Crouch. Touch. Pause. Engage. So yes, Philly with the put in. Give it up, please. La Cafia. There's Tranier. Away, White. Go blocking. Come back, Black. Billy takes it himself this time. He does it so well. I mean, he takes on the responsibility, trying to either clear his lines or keep the ball in play. The little chip kicks over the back and taking the pressure off Damien Try. But even the genius that is Yashvili has been frustrated this afternoon. His forwards haven't really given him any quick ball to work off. Marjolo Owens just making the point that the first offence was not straight. The second one was a knock-on, so it will be a scrummage. Biarritz ball. And an aspect of Ulster's play in the second half, which is beginning to creak, is this line-out. They've probably not a clean ball from the majority of the line-outs in the second half. Need to get the set-piece functioning, keep it simple. Just keep the ball, stay down here, and I suppose back not only yourselves but also the fact that Biritz have infringed so much and again they will be prone to give away more penalties. Pause, engage. So we're in sight of the final quarter of an hour. Yashvili. Here's Anguenya with the ball in hand with a small amount of space. Doesn't get the better though of Simon Danielli. Well, it looked almost as if it was a, a knock-on before he actually went out of play. But, yes, really trying to spark something. Get the ball into Nguyen's hands. The first time we've seen him in action this afternoon. But even the taste there has been shepherded into touch. And it came off Daniele. Came off Daniele's head there. He's got a habit of doing special things in this Heineken Cup. I can remember 
Got a hat trick against Gloucester and then a, a magnificent try in the uh, the quarterfinals last year against Ospreys, right down that right touchline. Yes, and he's got four tries already in the competition this season, Dagutta and Gwenya. Coming into round five, just Tommaso Benvenuti and Treviso have got more with five. And despite the low scoreline, the next 15 minutes, the most important 15 minutes for this Ulster side in 10 and 11 years since 1999 and 12 years. Tion just got that back to Yashvili. Here's Damien Try. Away, White! Don't expect anything too ambitious from this beer at side. Release, White, as far as they're concerned, so far, so good. There's Vahafalau. They will take the draw. Well, Vandenberg is penalised. And the reason that draw actually plays to, to Verit's strengths is because despite losing in that shock result against Aroni, they came away with two bonus points. One for finishing within seven points and also for uh, the four tries. And despite that shock result, that keeps them much in the hunt. Yes, as shocking as Miritz's defeat was at Irony, they did at least pick up their two bonus points, didn't they? Which uh, made all the difference. There's Edward Kutz here, his first start since the end of October, when he broke his arm in the top 14 game at Brief. It's worth making the point that if this score becomes a result, it's the one result which keeps Bath technically in pool four. They will need a lot of things to go their way next weekend, Bath, but Bath would technically still have a chance of qualification. Birich rumbling up towards the Ulster 22. There's Lund. Driven on that time by Wachbame. For me again. Well, we're where we were a few minutes ago. Keep your eye on Dammy and try. He may well oh, slip back right. into the pocket in a couple of moments. He's not there at the moment. There's Yashvili. Just dancing like a boxer there. It's there again for Beeritz. They're within four or five metres. That's Eric Lund. Support there from Varfalau. Look at the power here from Beeritz there to within two metres. Silva Marconi has just about got his short still on. There it is. Is that the half allow just reaching out for the line? This time it's the Ulster defence which is being tested. There's Yashvili. A crucial moment this for Ulster. Ravenhill has fallen very quiet. That's Magnus Lund. Good defence there from Muller. The ball has been knocked on. <laughs> the things were just so silent here. The crowd looking on thinking our players have done so well for the vast majority of the game and a Barrett's going to go up this pitch and come away for the first time 
the Ritz forwards, they were winning the collisions, they were getting across the gain line. You can see that difference for Buritz in the second half. And interestingly, you know, when the wind has been against both sides, the possession has actually gone up because they don't kick the ball away as much. They keep possession, they go through the phases, and they force the opposition to make tackles and try and make mistakes. But resolute defence from Ulster, and it had to be because Buritz got on the front foot and were just winning vital half yards. And Damien tried some. He didn't go into the pocket. He he really was backing his pack to try and get across that try line. Well, this time it's Benoit Auguste, the hooker, who's getting treatment for Biritz. They have Roman Terrain on the bench. Who's a fair old replacement to have up your sleeve. And there he is, the veteran. Benoit Auguste, now 34. Former Dax and Stade Francais. And big Eric Lund. Ten and a half minutes remain at Ravenhill. As things stand, Beeritz certainly the more happier of the two teams. Yeah, when they were looking forward to this game, the big question over here was could Ulster win, could Ulster win with a bonus point or win and starve Beeritz from a losing bonus point. I don't think anybody countenanced the idea that a draw might come out of this game, but if it does, it most certainly is advantage Beeritz. Well, the two teams have met on five previous occasions. Beeritz have won the last four. The only Ulster victory was here in December 2002, so a little more than eight years ago. And if Ulster get a draw here, it also potentially affects their chance of going through as a, as a best runner-up as well, because the best they could actually come out of the group with is 20 points. And there are two or three pools that could easily produce runners-up on 21, even 22 points. So BJ Buerta has hurt the wrist. He will go off. Well, after coming through sustained pressure and now having a defensive scrum, the one thing you do not want is to lose your Springbok and most experienced international in the front row there. And this is a massive scrum for Ulster and Declan Fitzpatrick coming on. Yes, there he is, but born in England, but an Island A international. Nelson Fitzpatrick. And all of a sudden, you can just sense a little bit of self belief that was lacking in Beritz for so much of this match. They're spending, you know, these, starting these last 10 minutes right in the, the part of the pitch that they want to. Crouch! Touch! Pause, engage. In nine. So Ulster got 10 minutes. First of all, they've got to get play out of their own 22. I know it's slip plaza, You wonder what will they do? They probably think about just Come clearing their lines here, but with less than 10 minutes, you don't want to die wondering, do they start throwing the ball around? Do they just try and get down into the Duritz half? Hope that there's a penalty comes their way. Leg square, legs underneath you. Big decisions, but first of all, they need to get the ball away from their own try line. Solid scrum. Get it into Ian Humphrey's hands and that left boot of his. Do the rest. Picked up by Vandenberg, the former Springbok. Pinar. Caught by Bolakura, quickly taken. To Hale Petty. Hale Petty sees a bit of a gap. He's looking for Bolacoro, but he just finds Trimble. But Trimble is dumped into touch by Bolacoro. So it will be a Beeritz line out. He did very well to get back there because he Time just out, slightly please. bought a dummy on the inside. Just gave seven. Hale Petty the opportunity to break the defensive line. But again, it's, you know, it's Beeritz right on the 22 here. 
So a change in the back row from Ulster. Off goes Willie Falloon, replaced by Chris Henry. But are you getting a sense that for the first time in a little more than an hour, Beeritz are, if not assuming control, certainly feeling at home? Eight and a half minutes remain, and it's uh, far too far from the finish line to be winding down the clock, but you get a sense that these tactics are the sort of tactics they'll be employing if they get the chance in the last minute, minute and a half. Beeritz will take the draw and be very happy with it. And they've not had a good afternoon. Well, they've made a mistake there. And it will be Ulster's ball. You know, big, big issue for Ulster as well is the longer the Birrits stay down here and do keep possession, you know, they get frustrated, they get desperate. Desperation really starts to, to kick in. And what they don't want to do is also give a penalty opportunity to Yashvili because if anybody's going to kick it, he will. And you also realise just how important those extra three points just before half-time that Yashvili kicked, how important they were to just giving Birrits a sniff are building up a lead that was big enough to try and repel Ulster in the second half. Touch, pause, engage, keep it up, bin nine. So Pino with the put in, but look at the strength of that Beeritz oh, pack again. And Rory Best looks as if he's hurt himself. Sivan Markane in the thick of it, who would have thought it? Yashvili using all his experience, just trying to calm his colleague down. But in the second half, the Ulster line-outs have been questionable. Then Beritz, as the game has gone on, have begun to, I think you see, just run straight into his own player. And then the scrums are beginning to go Beritz's way. They're winning the collisions. They're beginning to boss the breakdown. Well, something certainly happened there in the front row. Rory Best looking in real discomfort. Well, that looks like a, a sort of the rib area, intercostal muscle, something like that. Very painful, but also losing Bota, now losing Best. Seven minutes to go. Scrum under pressure. Berritz in the ascendancy. All of a sudden, from looking to actually win the game, it's almost a back to the wall stuff. But you cannot get a draw. It means very little to Ulster. We need to get down the pitch here. So on comes Nigel Brady, who's been a member of this Ulster squad throughout most of that barren spell since they won the Heineken Cup. Eight years ago, he made his debut. Well, he's got seven minutes in which to help this Ulster side get over the finish line. Just watch the body language of Yashvili as well. Just gesturing to the referee. He's going to be looking to use all his experience just to try and influence Nigel Owens. Well, we hear that Rory Best has popped a rib. That was certainly the evidence from the pictures that we saw. Well, Beeritz are penalised. For Brian McLaughlin. Well, what must he be thinking? seven minutes and it has been sustained pressure on Ulster for quite a while now they'd be so relieved to actually get out of their own half and how the game changes all of a sudden Barretts will be keen to just keep their discipline not give any penalty opportunities to Ulster Ulster just need to win this ball 
Well, I can assure you that that clock there is tallied with the official clock, and it shows we've got just a little more than five to go. Away, Wait, sorry. And Ulster will be desperate to get Breaking possession away. here. The French side will be delighted with a draw. There's Verhoffala. Yashvili. Let it come, right? Let it come. Ball is there. There's August away with the support of Watrame. The clock Keep says four and a half minutes. That was Eric Lund that time. There's Magnus Lund. Away, White, not the tackler, away, White. Not the tackler. Last feet. Yes, Billy to Benoit August, the tackle from Humphreys. Hale Petty, the fullback. Stay on your feet, the way out. There is nothing enterprising about this at all, but as far as Beerits are concerned, there doesn't need to be. The clock at the moment is very much their friend. There's Yashvili. Lund is standing off. The two Lunds are, in fact. Magnus with the support there of Eric. Through the 12th phase. A little more than three minutes to go. And now inside the Ulster half, it's a penalty against Beeritz. The ball being held in the tackle. And after 12 years, this is what it could boil down to. A single penalty. Ian Humphreys, well, he's been on form all season with that left foot. But you put all that to one side because it all comes down to this. Well, I'm sure Ian Humphreys has had a lifetime of being compared to big brother David, but so often David Humphreys in the last couple of minutes of a game, a penalty, a drop goal, secured the most unlikely of victories. He can't watch, but Ian Humphreys has the opportunity to make himself the most popular man in Ulster with this kick. No problem with the distance. No problem with the line. Ian Humphreys met the challenge head on and he was equal to it. Ulster have a three point lead. Two minutes to go. Well, as soon as it, le as it left his point, it was never in doubt. He absolutely smashed it. It split the post, and you can see what it means to the spectators here. So 90 seconds to go. Ulster can't now afford to let it slip. That's how things stand in Pool 4. It'll set things up wonderfully for the final weekend, but we've still got a little more than a minute to go here. And with a minute to go, it's crucial you play your rugby down in this part of the pitch. You force Spirits to come up with something absolutely magical, otherwise you secure the victory. Eric Lund. Beeritz, without doubt, will take some comfort in the prospect of a losing bonus point. But that kick cost them one point of their own, and more significantly, probably two from Ulster as well, because it has become now a straight head-to-head -head between those two sides. There's Tranier. Bond. 20 seconds to go. 
Can Biarritz produce something? They've got 55 metres to go. Damien Trial. Jerome Tion. Well, it's not been pretty. It has been a very nervous occasion. But in the end, Ian Humphreys looks as if he's taken his side over the finish line. It's the final phase. Beerus do have possession, though. There's Damien Try. Release right. Last play. Tion. Yashvili. There's Benoit August. Yashvili again. And Nguenya just inches away from the touchline over on the far side. The referee's blown his whistle. That will be the final action of the match. And Alsta have done it, but how it sets things up for next week. It does. This having cup, it just throws up so many quality matches going into round six. The win is also, but the losing bonus point for Beritz keeps them very much alive. It will go down to the line, but look at the body language. Ulster will not hurt. They've got that victory. And my Heining Cup man of the match, Ian Humphreys. Those two long distance kicks, and in particular that final one, clinched it for Ulster. Tremendous composure, and he deserves it for that alone. So there it is. And Ravenhill, it's finished. Ulster 9, Beer it 6. Pool 4 is still very much in the melting pot. It certainly is. Full credit to Ian Humphreys. Superb nerves at the end there to steal the win for Ulster. It looked to be slipping away from them. Biritz, the masters of closing out tight games. They'd have happily gone back to Biritz with the draw. But the win for Ulster means that this pool is still very much alive. It will go to the final weekend, and Ulster have done what they needed to do. They have got the victory. However, a losing bonus point for Biritz means that it is still they who hold that narrow advantage because, as you can see, 17 points apiece. It means that if both teams pick up bonus point wins next weekend, Biritz have got Bath at home, Ulster on the road to Aroni, then Biritz will be going through because they have the better head-to-head -head record with Ulster, courtesy of a 5-0 win in round two. But Ulster have got the victory. And we've got a man in studio here who will uh, always agree that goal kickers worth their weight in gold. Michael, talk us through this one. Well, just a lovely strike from Humphreys. Distance was never a problem because of the wind behind him. You've just got to pick your line and trust it and stroke it through and go through the routine. And Humphreys, what a magnificent kick there. I mean, really great kick under pressure. And, you know, because if he didn't kick that, they're literally out of the Heineken Cup. Absolutely. And that's a, a big kick for Humphreys. And please bring not just that one, but the other two as well. They were pretty... Pretty uh, strong, steely nerves. Absolutely. Only just, though, for Ulster. But you've got to say that, obviously, you know, I know I know how frustrated you get with Biritz. I mean, from the 60-minute mark, they were trying to wind that one down, weren't they? Uh, yeah, it was never in doubt for Ulster, was it? Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it, they are frustrating. We've talked in here. You know, Damien tried going for a drop goal when, really, all it needed was a bit more adventure. I know what they were trying to do, but not from 20 minutes. I mean, they're yeah. good enough players, even in those conditions, to try and one out a little bit more, put a bit more width on it to stretch the Ulster mm. defence. They're just playing into their hands all the time. <laughs> And Nigel Owens was just pinging him. Disappointed. Because yeah. Beerits can play rugby, can't they? They showed that in the last minute of the game when they had to yeah. try and get back into the game. Uh, they started playing a bit of rugby. Uh, but a great win for Ulster, that's yeah. for sure. I mean, hard to pick out here as in, a, in a game like that, but who else stood out for you for Ulster? I think most of their forwards, particularly uh, Ferris in the, in the front. Wannenberg had, didn't really make... He made a few errors there, but the forwards, I mean, they just ground away, particularly in that first half there where they had so much possession and just turned the ball back in time after time and just maintained possession. I, I thought it was a very, very good all-round performance. Their defence in the second half was very strong. OK, let's head over to uh, Belfast. Ian Humphreys is ready to talk to Graham Simmons. Ian Humphreys, congratulations. The sweetest kick of your life? Yeah, it'd certainly be up there. Um, when I was fortunate enough, I was straight in front of the post down wind, so just a wee chip and went over. Eight iron, was it? Yeah, something like that, anyway. It was a long time coming. I mean, were you thinking there in the second half this isn't going to happen for us? Yeah, certainly we were starting to... Well, we weren't panicking, but I mean, Beirits were camped in our line, um, so we had a quick regroup and said, just get down there and try and get the penalty and hopefully be able to knock it over and take the win. Obviously,